yeah, 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 yeah. It's Jimmy oh. Murray who made that phrase famous in the wild party. Uh, she was a brava on that. By the way, she was wearing a blonde wig, although someone once accused her, go. A woman at Manhattan Theatre Club in a subsequent show that I did said to me, oh, after the show, oh, and you've dyed your hair brown for this show. And I went, oh, no, 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 I was wearing a wig in the wild party. And she goes, no, I can tell a wig. So she was informing me that I was wrong in that I was, I was like, no, I'm pretty sure I pink curled my hair every night. I, and we were in front of a picture of me. And I was like, look, do you see? My hair couldn't do that on any day of the week. It couldn't. No. Yes, it could. I know a wig. <laughs> OK, ma'am, you are, you win. And Salary Desk my mother. Okay, um, <laughs> so um, I love her. Julia is wearing green, because at one point she was <laughs> Elphaber. And That's I, not why. It's Christmas. That's why. Okay, we're, this is not going to be shown in Christmas. It's not Christmas. It's Martin Luther King's Day. I don't know what it's going to be shown. It's nothing. Forget it. It's and because... Hmm. Jewish. The point is, I want to talk to uh, Julia about one moment that happened at the end of Act 1. She was alpha by normally, you know, when she goes, it's me. So it is. So the crazy cherry picker rises up and she's flying over the stage. So you get hooked in, cherry picker rises, you're flying. Now, what happened one night when it did not work? One night, through the, the magic of the live theater, um, the computer glitched and I did not go up, but um, there's a plan B that you're taught and you have to um, disengage yourself from the, the, the sort of lock that you're in and you run straight down stage with all of your accoutrement, your bag and your broom and your hat and your cape and uh, you just keep on singing. And everybody else, all the guards and the townspeople who are supposed to be looking up at you, they all lie on the stage as if you're in the air, except they're as close to you as Seth is to me, lying on the ground, and they're all going, look at her, she's wicked, get her! And you're like, well, get her, I'm right here, what's the problem? It's devastating. And uh, the night that it happened, they had put in, I think, a, a, a new uh, sort of light plot from the London production. They had added lights, and they, they um, enhanced shows. As, Sassed as, it up. Yeah, as they make uh, new productions. And, um, and somehow, because there's a whole light plot that they go into if you go into plan B. And I finished, and somehow the plot B lights hadn't been put into the plan B th thing, so I was lit. And oh, I remember, so, ah, ah, go. And I wasn't totally lit, but there was a little string of lights. I was very clearly still lit. And then I was aware that the curtain was going to come down on my head at some juncture very soon. If I, But I was like, no, I must maintain the illusion of the witch. I am a thespian. I have a BFA in musical theater. And then I was like, yeah. Bah -bah. <laughs> I just walked off. <laughs> she gave up. Without grace. Um, oh, well. I tried. I all tried. right, so the lovely Julia Murney, by the way, has made a uh, load of money doing voiceovers. Um, can you just give us one of your current ones? Um, Estee Lauder. Let me hear it. Uh, I, I don't know what, it, uh, usually, I, I'm, I'm talking about the product, whatever the product may be. It's something about, you know, something your skin can't live without. It's that sort of stuff. Do you actually add the air to Yes, it? I do. Didn't and then, ask? but then we have to speed it up when it's gift time because you have a really short amount. Like it's gift time at Macy's. This whatever deluxe gift set yours for twenty nine ninety nine with any fifty nine ninety nine purchase exclusively at Macy's. And on your apartment. Um, <laughs> part two, just quickly. Didn't you? I remember I once did an interview with you, and either you were a porn star or you advertised a porn. What? I did. I did promos for the Spice Channel. Mm -hmm. Promos are usually things like coming up on NBC, that's promo. But I did promos for a, a, a porn network called the Spice Channel. Natch. No, like you do. At the time, there were two layers of spice, if you will. There was the regular that you could just get on your basic cable, and that was just um, softcore mm. porn. Mm. And then the, uh, the second layer was pay by the hour. I did promos for the pay by the hour. Let me hear. And no offense meant to anyone of what I'm about to say. Go. <clears throat> if you like your with an Asian twist and all the you can handle, welcome to the month of October on Spice. That's not going to make it out of the tape. Are you Literally serious? One word out of that could make it. And I have to welcome. tell you that you do need to go onto Jeff Blumenkrantz's podcast because for, he's writing a song per month for a year and a bunch of people, like he was out with Jason Robert Brown, he's like, Jason, what should I write for October? He was like, call Marnie. Call Marnie, she's got the October story. And he wrote a song about it, it's, which I recorded called Welcome to My Apartment. It's hysterical. Anyway, kids watch this. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're going to focus on a big actress fund concert I did many years ago, now almost 10 years ago. And, um, How was, long ago was it? Almost 10 years. It was 2002. Oh Actually, my it was God. 10 years ago. Isn't that crazy? Julia had not yet done Broadway, which is crazy. 
And it was a different Fanny Bryce for each song. So I either got like a big amazing star that was brilliant, or I got someone that not many people knew, AKA Julia Morney, who would then become brilliant and people would freak that H out by how good she was. So I gave Julia literally the classic song people, and I'm sure she came on stage and people were like, we're angry, we want to start singing this, how dare this person sing this song? And then by the end, freaking out, were you so amazed at how much the audience loved you? Did you take it in? I actually was, I really but was. But did you love it, it also? It was very, because it was at the New Amsterdam, which where the folly, the Ziegfeld Follies had taken place All back right. in the day. And you can see the, the um, sort of ornateness from the mm -hmm. stage and the boxes, and it's so beautiful. And I had, Peter Gallagher yeah. on stage playing Nicky Arnstein. Nicky Arnstein, he was, so, We got to kiss, it was amazing. Um, and he was totally, like, we had to sneak on. The, everybody sort of made a, an entrance, Reveal. each new Fanny Bryce. And my arm was linked with his. And right before we walked out, I was so nervous. And I went, oh. And he looked at me and he went, you're going to be fine. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be fine. Aww. Because he says I'm going to be fine. And so he was there with me for almost the whole piece until the very end. And I, it was and the roar that came back, that was a cool night. And once I was done with people, I was done. All right, Poor Jada. brilliant uh, Carly number. Carmelo had the last number in the show. We were eating pizza, me and Lilius. We were all Flossing. just having a grand old time because we were done. We were so, it was, it's a stress it was bucket. Oh, that's my mic. It's a stress um, bucket. Okay, we're gonna, do, we're gonna do the very last section. Two things I'm obsessed with, Julia's ours. Mm. Deep in your soul, you'll hear the R. Oh. And then I'm okay. also obsessed with the, the lack of breathing. So just spot the phraseology. I just love it. So just have fun. <laughs> Julie, we literally haven't sung this. I can't even tell you how many years. We've in, got, I, have we even done this? I think maybe we did it once, maybe once. It, you know what's funny? I never want to do it because it feels very precious. I know. To not have the orchestra and Peter Gallagher. Is he, and ladies and gentlemen, no. I kind of look like Peter. You do. And, well, the eyebrows. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. With one person, one very special person, a feeling deep in your soul says you were had enough. No more hunger and thirst, but first be a person who. Still got it. <laughs> Ten years on. Still got it.